everybody, it's Angela, and I am back with another design team project for Saw Crafters. And she had sent me this um, little frame to alter, and it has a stand that you put it on. And then it has the word family laser cut on the top, and it was just really cute. And since it said family, I wanted to kind of do something almost um, heritage like so it could either be heritage or fall it's kind of has the fall colors going on here and you'll see when I um, get into the papers and stuff and it comes uh, disassembled like this and all you've got to do is take some glue and I'm just using some Aileen's wood glue and putting it on there but pretty much any kind of craft glue that adheres to wood will work just fine and so there's these four pieces that go around the side just to lift it up and give the base some weight to it and it really makes it into a really nice display piece and it gives you a place also to embellish you know to put flowers and other embellishments on there so here I am just finishing up on the base and you just put some glue on the tabs that um, go against the piece you're gluing to and on the ends and there I'm just going to wipe away some of the extra glue and I'm going to cover this in paper but you could paint it stain it um, spray paint it whatever you want to do and so there's the little topper that goes in there but I'm going to go ahead and cover it first and I'm using this free spirit paper by we are memory keepers and I love that leather look and I love those that floral pattern that kind of gave it a fall look to it. I also love that wood grain but I have another project I want to save that for. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my piece on there and trace around it and then cut around here. And I'm also going to distress this just a little bit and so I find my little um, Tim Holtz distressing unit and use that on all the paper edges and then in case when I distress those edges it kind of rolls up on the side I just wanted a little bit of brown to show but actually you don't see it so here I am with the distressing tool just kind of roughing up those edges not a lot but just a little bit because like I said I wanted this to be kind of a heritage thing so I don't want it to be you know uh, real clean lines or anything and I'm just using my Tim Holtz tea dye to, or vintage photo, I'm not sure which actually, um, just to go around the edges of where I roughed it up so that the white wouldn't show. And now I'm using some more Aileen's tacky glue. This is just the regular clear, uh, clear tacky glue and a paintbrush. And I find that if I use a paintbrush, I am less likely to get it all over the place, but I actually, I still wind up getting it in spots I don't want, but this kind of keeps it down. It keeps me from wasting it too because sometimes when you take your scissors to the tip of the bottle, I don't know about you, but I always mess it up and make the hole too big and then the glue just kind of comes out in big glops and gets all over the place. So I've just started kind of using a paintbrush for a lot of things. And again, I'm just going to take these side pieces and rough up the edges. And so they show kind of white there after you rough them up. So then I take the brown ink and just kind of get rid of that stark white. And I, I thought about doing something shabby chic, but with the family, and then you'll see I pull in one of Saw Crafter's trees to kind of give it the family tree sort of theme. I just really felt like um, this more fall color would go really well with this. And so, yeah, so I'm glad to be back in the craft room. Uh, I think I said in my last video, it's been really hot here. Like one day it was 110 here in Oregon, um, you know, 108. And I don't have any air conditioning in my craft room. Now I do have a window unit in the bedroom on the top floor, one in the living room on the main floor and one in the basement in our offices. So it kind of cools right around those areas and that's it it doesn't get any further so it doesn't make it into my craft room and I would go in there with a little I had a little fan blowing but it just wasn't enough I just kind of sat there and 
sweated. So, um, yeah, so I haven't been in the craft room a lot because of that. And also because, uh, we did our wheat harvest, um, weekend before last and beans the weekend before that. So we've just been really busy on the farm, um, harvesting everything because it was just so hot. Everything came on early. And so we kind of had to scramble, uh, to get everything harvested before it fell off the stalks onto the ground. And, uh, we got it in, of course, you know, like all of us here in Oregon with the dry summer that we had, um, the dry land farmers just, the yields are really low because there just wasn't enough water this spring. I mean, we planted our crops in like March and I mean, you know, March in Oregon where it rains all the time and we didn't really get any uh, appreciable rainfall um, at all. From March on, we had a, a couple thunderstorms is about it and they didn't really do much so yields were really really low and um, okay so back to this uh, I just decided to do the family with the ink and ink it uh, because it really with that brown ink matches into that leather effect paper that I did the base so that brings some of that darker brown up to the top of the project as well as on the base and then I also like it because it's kind of a lazy way to do it. It's easier than painting, especially with brown ink, because then the sides, the edges of the word family are already kind of brown from when she um, uh, laser cuts the image out of the MDF. So um, yeah, it's really quick and easy if you just um, stain it with ink. So again, I'm just putting my tacky glue and adhering my paper right to the front of that just kind of chopping it out there and then I'm just gonna take my craft knife and go around the edges of this and trim it up and I trimmed it so that the little tab that inserts into the base would have paper on it because it seemed that that joint was a little bit sloppy but actually um, I had to wind up taking the paper off those little tabs because it just it made it too tight so um, the glue holds that in just fine so don't worry about covering that tab or if it seems a little sloppy when you first put it into the base so because I couldn't do the um, distressing tool around the edges uh, because I glued it down first I'm just taking a little bit of sandpaper around all the edges and just kind of roughing that up so that it matches the distressed edges of the base and then again I'm taking the brown ink and going all around those edges as well so I really love that floral it's really pretty it's got kind of that mustard yellow color it's got a little gray a little brown and so now I'm just cutting out those slots so that the base can fit back or the um, top can fit into the base And it goes like that but you can see it was just too tight so I did wind up taking the paper back off those tabs and it wiggles just a little bit when you put it in there but once you glue it it holds it tight so it's not a problem and for the back because I want to slip a photo in there and I don't want to be um, just limited to the photo I originally put in I want to make this into kind of a pocket so I can slide a photo in and change out the photos that are in there because I don't know I think I'm gonna give this to my mom or my aunt and I'm not sure which um, so that way I can change the photo or they can change the photo you know um, whenever they want to so I'm gonna put the paper there and then I see that I need to extend my inking down a little farther just to make that look like a nice clean edge and then I just put score tape a really sticky um, tape down the two edges and I'm gonna leave the top open and then that way a photo can just slip right down in there so I'm just cutting out of this other dark colored floral and that fits on there really nice So I'm just going to go ahead and line that up at the bottom, burnish it on there and see now you've got 
um, enough room right there to just um, slip a photo down the back. I'm just roughing up the edges to match everything else. So that's really cute and so I go ahead and put some glue on those tabs insert it into the base and then to keep it nice and upright I just put two bottles of um, Heidi Swap shine on there just to hold it um, perpendicular and then these are some of the other saw crafters products I'm thinking about using on this frame I don't think all of them make it on here uh, but I go ahead and get them prepped uh, I want to use this little fence little MDF fence and so I go ahead and um, put some of the brown uh, ink on there I also have this little lamp post is really cute and um, some claw cans those don't make it on here and the swirl doesn't make it on here but I think everything else does and I will put links to each of these products down below um, so it'll be really easy for you to find it on her website if you want to do this project and if you use the code Angela fans you get a 10% discount on your order of $30 or more from her shop and I'll put that um, code down in the description too so you make sure you get your discount when you order and then the tree is uh, chipboard but everything else is MDF and I'll have to look on her site if there is a MDF tree like that I will go ahead and link it because I think it might be better although the chipboard worked just fine so um, it was definitely strong enough so now that I've inked the tree brown um, I do want to include some other colors on it with some mist so I'm just testing some of the colors and in the paper line they have a teal as well as the kind of mustard and brown and gray so I kind of stuck with the same colors that were in the paper pad that's a good indication of what colors are going to go together well so now I'm just checking my sprays to see which ones you know I like the best and then I am just going to put some sprays on and then use my heat tool to dry it in between so that it keeps those colors and they don't uh, get all muddy. That's a good tip uh, when you're doing sprays. If you like it when it gets to a certain color, then stop and dry it and then move on to your next color. And I'm kind of drying it on the back too because like I said, this is chipboard so it does warp a little bit, but once I glue it onto the frame, it's just fine. Um, but she might have an MDF version of this so I'll look for that and I just love the sparkle on this and I show some close-ups of it later um, yeah it just has a beautiful sparkle and I'm taking some of the Heidi Swap gold and just putting a little bit of that on there as well and since it had the word family on the frame I just thought family tree and a heritage photo would just be so cute and uh, saw also has these little open cutwork leaves and so I'm just uh, spraying some of those with the gold Heidi swap and I'll link to she has some oak leaves too if you want to use oak leaves instead of these leaves um, I debated but I have another project I'd like to use the oak leaves on so I wanted to save them and I use these instead um, but either one would work perfect for this project so I'll go ahead and link uh, both of them down below so I'm just doing some of the leaves in the gold Heidi swap and then some of the leaves um, in more of the teal color and I start with um, a couple of them and they looked just a little too green to me once they got sprayed onto the MDF so I go back in my stash and I find something that's a little more blue and I'll spray that here in just a minute yeah I think it's this one and it looks really blue when I put it on there but once you dry it up um, it's not quite as vibrant so it gives a beautiful teal uh, color to it and since I'm going to use some teal um, flowers and stuff too it, it'll all come together so I set those aside to dry and then I'm looking for a way to kind of support it so I can do the embellishments but so that you can also see what I'm doing as well so there's the tree 
and I want it to kind of overlap the photo a little bit and then kind of hang off the side. And I want it to stand out from stand off of the frame just a little bit. So I have these little pieces. Those are like the interior bits that you pop out of Saw Crafters products. And I save some of those that are different shapes that I think I might use for just this purpose. And um, I'm going to use them as kind of a little standoff uh, from the frame just to give me a little bit of dimension. And now I'm looking through my flowers, looking for some colors that I like. And I want the teal ones, and then I like those kind of light, um, kind of whitish yellow color. And then I have some brown ones as well. And I'm checking my glue gun. It seemed like it took forever to heat up. I think I try it three or four times and um, waiting for it to get hot enough. And that just reminds me, I don't think I shut it off. I'm going to have to go back up to my craft room and check if I actually shut that off because I've accidentally left it on before and that's just not a good idea. So what am I doing here? Oh, I'm um, checking my glue gun to see if it's uh, hot enough and glue those little standoffs. And then there you can see it just lifts the tree up from the frame just a little bit. And then I just put some glue on that and stick it to the frame. And then you'll see where the base is kind of hanging over there. I do clip that off to be flush with the frame, that little trunk portion, root portion, I guess would be what it is. And then the little fence, I'm kind of sticking farther out and I'm putting a flower against it to help hold it in place because it's kind of freestanding out there. And I think about using the claw cans here, but they just don't quite make it onto this project. But I love the little fence there. And then I'm going to just put the leaves in different locations on this tree just to give it a little more dimension and a little more color. So I'm going to cluster three of them kind of together there and then have um, some of the others along the sides. Just putting a little tiny bit of hot glue behind each one. You don't need much to hold it on there. And that just adds uh, a little bit more dimension and shine to the whole project. And so there is the lamp post and I decide to, instead of clustering more on the bottom left hand side of the frame, I decide to keep all of my embellishments over to the right hand side and make that a more complex and tighter cluster just so it doesn't get too cluttery. You can see here I thought about putting flowers over there and it was just too much. So I go up diagonally to the top and just put a couple flowers up there. And that way it helps keep it from getting too cluttered up, and, but it makes for a more interesting cluster because there's just a little bit more to look at because it's all in one spot. And then my little memories that I sprayed um, with some of that blue, um, it has two holes in it, so I wanted to just find some gold brads to put in those holes. So I just go ahead and put some brads in there and then I'm going to adhere that right to the front of the stand. I just put a little hot glue on there, put that on, just gives a nice little touch. And then I have this metallic um, rub-on compound and I just rub a little of the gold right over the, um, the street lamp where the light would be coming out. And then I take some of the coppery bronzy color and I put on the fence and up on the word family just to um, give those a little bit more of a different color so they're not just all one color. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I try to kind of um, angle it so that the light catches it. Yeah, I think you can see it a little bit there. It just kind of keeps that from being all one color. It gives it a little more interest. And so that is my finished project. And I really love how it come together. Um, 
you know I'm kind of thinking about I'm so ready for fall and the fall colors and stuff so there you can see a little bit of that coppery color on the word family cluster of flowers then you can see all the shine and dimension in that tree it's just gorgeous in person I don't know if the camera does, does it justice and then the uh, little memories on the bottom and then I'll do a couple close-ups here and in the close-ups I um, have put a photo in the frame and I used a sepia uh, ha family heritage photo in there and I think that my mom or my aunt whoever whoever winds up getting this is just gonna love it so I just love all the shine and all the dimension and you know the way that base gives you a place to put all these extra embellishments and it's it's kinda like a stage for your photo and there you can see it with the heritage photo inside in a kind of sepia tone so it all matches in there's a close-up of the tree and then I have one of the whole project so thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions or comments just leave them below and again use the discount code Angela fans and you'll get a 10% discount on orders of $30 or more from Saw's shop okay guys I'll talk to you later thanks for watching bye